In this video, I want to show you how to paint great looking anime faces with budget friendly art supplies. The first step is to paint the skin. The paper I'm using is Strathmore 400 series. It is made of wood pulp instead of 100% cotton, so it is very affordable. But at the same time, it is less absorbent, so it's less forgiving for any mistakes. So the key here is to put down the skin color quickly and evenly without retouching. I'm keeping more paint than usual on my brush to keep my wash wet and smooth. This paper does not take many layers, so to avoid color smudging, I'll strictly follow a layered process from light to dark, and I'll minimize the number of layers. I'll only start the next layer once the previous layer is dry. Next layer is skin shadows. Before I start putting down any color, I need to think about where the shadows should go, since if I screw up here, it is going to be really hard to fix. For blush, I'm going to use a wet on wet technique. I'm wetting the area below the eyes with a damp brush with clean water. And then I'll be dropping in some blush color so it can form a diffused, nice glow. This side does not diffuse very well, so you can use a damp brush to smear and soften the edges. Now we can paint our eyes. For the iris, I'm putting some strong brown color on the top half of the iris, and then I'm using a clean damp brush to blur the color down to the bottom half. The brush I'm using here is a nylon brush that came in a set. Each cost about a dollar. Nylon brushes usually release the paint too quickly. So to paint dark details, such as eyelashes, I need to keep a small amount of very strong and thick paint on my brush. This gives me a better control and a fine point to make those sharp strokes. For her mouth, I added a little bit of red to the shadow color to indicate the lip color, and I left a gap in the middle to indicate a highlight. Before I start painting her hair, I need to figure out where to leave the paper unpainted to use as highlights. Then I start from the top of the head and stop my strokes where the highlights start. If you find this slows you down, you can always draw the edges of the highlights in the sketch and cover the pencil lines with hair color as you paint. Same as before, I want to keep painting at a faster pace and to get a flat and even wash. Once I get to the ends of the hair, I slow down and wipe off the excess paint on my brush to make sure the brush tip is sharp, so I can drag out thin lines to create those pointy ends. This is super important to create a delicate look. Nylon brushes do not hold as much water as natural hair, so you'll have to go back to your palette a few times to pick up more paint. So for this, I pre-mixed enough color on my palette to paint all of the hair. Next layer is hair shadows. I find that when I'm painting on this paper, I can lift the color from previous layers pretty easily, even when the previous layer is dry. So I try not to push around the paint or soften the edges on the second layer. This is not ideal because I love soft edges, but at least I can keep the painting clean and fresh this way. For the hair behind the neck, I'm adding a color that is dark enough in one shot so I don't have to do another layer. The fewer layers, the better. For the shadows created by her bands, I use skin shadow color and carefully paint around the hair strands. Be careful not to touch the strands too much because the color might bleed into your shadows. Using a darker brown color, I'm adding the pupil and darkening the top half of the eye. Now the shadow color around here is dry so I can put in the eyebrow. I'm using my usual poster color in white for general highlights. Since I'm lazy, I'm just gonna pick up directly from the tube. So I picked up a really thick dot and I'm going to put it in her eye. So if you didn't leave the highlights before, this is when you can add the highlights. You want the highlights to be really bright, so you wanna apply it pretty thickly. You can also apply a bit on her lips, but since I left a gap, it's okay to leave it out as well. 
You can also add some flying strands on her hair. For example, here when it overlaps. Or you can use this to touch up your highlights wherever you think you missed in when you're painting the hair. You can also use it to fix where you have paint too much into the eye. So for example, this part should be white, but I put some skin color in, I can use this to fix it. Just so it's complete, I quickly put down some red color for her top, and we're done! So with affordable art supplies, we can still make beautiful paintings. But of course, when you're ready to try professional art supplies, you'll be surprised how much more possibility you have in terms of techniques and the results you can achieve. You can check them out in my previous tutorials.